In this session, we'll learn how to label the elevations of several profiles displayed in a profile view. On my screen is a portion of a proposed roadway project for State Route 25. In the profile view, we'll find several profiles. This one represents the existing ground. Over here is the finished grade center line of State Route 25. Likewise, we have a pair of profiles showing the proposed left and right edges of pavement. Based on the location of these profiles, we can see the road is super elevated in this area, making the left edge of pavement higher than the right. If you're wondering how these additional profiles were generated, I have created a video that walks through the process. You'll find a link to that recording in the description. If we look at the bottom of the profile, we'll find labels that describe some of the profile elevations at various stations along the alignment. These labels are created as part of a band style. Bands can be placed at the top or bottom of a profile view. To identify labels that are part of a band, simply hover over one of them. Let's take a closer look at this band. I'll do that by selecting the Profile View, and from the contextual ribbon I'll choose Profile View Properties. In the Properties dialog box I'll select the Bands tab. Right here we can see the band that was applied. It is a Profile Data Band. Right here is the style name being used. Here we can see the band was placed at the bottom of the Profile View. It's important to note that a profile band can label two profiles. If I drag down, we can see Profile 1 and Profile 2. In this case, Profile 1 represents the label here on the left. Profile 2 is the label on the right. If I hover, we can see Profile 1 is labeling the existing ground center line, and Profile 2 is labeling the finished grade center line. I'm going to click the X to close this, and then we'll zoom in a little bit. Now, I would like to add some elevations for the left and right edges of pavement as well. In addition, to help prevent confusion, I'm going to add a prefix to each of these labels so that we can easily tell them apart. We'll start with the labels that are here already. Let me zoom out. I will select the Profile View, and I'll choose Profile View Properties. I will then select this band, and then I'll click the icon next to the style name, and then I'll click the Edit button to edit this style. I should also mention that a band style includes more than just labels. It can also include grid lines, ticks, titles, and block symbology, among other things. For right now, we're just going to focus on the labels. I'll do that by going to the Band Details tab. I will then select the Major Station Location, and I'll choose Compose Label. On the Layout tab, I will click in the Preview area, and then I'll pan and zoom to a Major Station Location. If I open the component list, we can see there are three labels at this location, one for station value, existing ground, and finished ground. We can see that right here. If you're wondering which component is which, you can simply select one of them. In this case, I chose existing ground elevation, and then change its visibility to false. Let me turn this back on. To add a prefix to this component, I will click in the Contents field, and then I'll click the ellipsis button. I will then click right in front of the programming code representing the label, and I'll add XCL. I'll type X, and then we'll use a symbol for CL. I'll do that by going to the Format tab. I'll click the Symbol button, and I'll choose Other. Here in the character map for this font, I'm going to drag all the way to the bottom. I'll double click on CL. I will then choose Copy to copy that symbol to the clipboard. I'll close the character map. And then I'll click after the X and I'll press Ctrl V to paste. I will then add a dash. I'll click OK. And we can see the change here on screen. Let's do the same thing for the finished ground elevation. I'll click in Contents, Ellipsis. I'll click in Front. I'll type P and then press Ctrl V and a dash. I'll click OK. This takes care of the labels at the major station locations. I will then click OK. And we'll go to the minor station location. I'll choose Compose Label. Let's click in the preview and we'll zoom in on a minor station location. For the existing ground elevation component, we'll change its contents. I'm going to add the same prefix. Likewise, we'll take care of the finished ground component. Same thing. And I'll click OK. I will then click OK. OK. I'll click OK to close the style selector, followed by the profile properties, and we can see the change on screen. If you remember, a band can label two profiles, so to add the additional labels, I'm simply going to create another band. Once again, we'll back up and pan this over. I'll select the profile view. I'll go to profile view properties. I'm going to create another profile data band, just like the first one. We'll select the same style, elevations and stations and then I'll click Add. In this case, I'll accept the defaults for the label locations and click OK. Just for a second, I'll click Apply, and you can see where that band was placed just below the previous one. 
Now I don't want this band to be exactly the same, so we'll make some changes to it. I'm going to select the style for that band, and then rather than editing this style, I'll open the menu and choose Copy Current Selection. We'll create a new band style based on the original. At the top of the dialog box, we can see the name of the new style, Elevations and Stations Copy. That'll be fine for right now. At the Major Station Locations, I'll choose Compose Label. I will then click in the preview and pan and zoom to that area. With this second band, I have no need for these additional station labels, so I will choose that component and click the X to delete it. I will then select the existing ground elevation component and will rename this EOP Left. I'll click in the Contents field, I'll click the Ellipsis button, I will then select the programming code and I'm going to change the precision of this label to the hundredth. I'll click the arrow to update the code, then we'll change the prefix to LT for left. I'll click OK. Since this is a copy of the initial band style, I don't want these labels to be right on top of the other labels, so let's offset this a little bit. We can see the current X offset is negative 0.025. I'm going to change that to negative 0.2, and I'll press Enter. That should move the label over enough to accommodate the existing ground centerline label. Let's grab the other component. I'm going to rename this one EOP Right. We'll click in the Contents field. I'll grab the Ellipsis button. The precision of this label is fine. I'm just going to change the prefix to RT. I'll click OK, and then we will change its offset to 0.2. I'll press Enter. That looks good. I'll click OK. Finally, we'll take care of the minor station locations. I'll choose Compose Label. We won't zoom in in this case. Let's just rename that existing ground elevation component to EOP Left. For contents, I'm going to give this a precision of 2, and we'll overwrite the original. I will then add a prefix of LT, and an offset of negative 0.2. Finally, we'll grab the last component. We'll make this one EOP Right. In the contents, I will change the prefix. The precision is fine. I'll click OK, and we'll change its offset to 0.2. I'll choose OK, and then OK. I'll click OK to assign this new style to my second band. Let's click Apply, and OK. If I back up, we can now see the two bands. In some cases, this might be perfect. I'd like to go one more step, however. I'd like to push these new labels up such that they're alongside the others. Let's select the Profile View again. We'll go to Profile View Properties. As long as we're here, we'll take care of some housekeeping items as well. I'll start by renaming this new band style. I will select it. We'll go to Edit. On the Information tab, I'm going to call this EOP Data. I will also go to the Display tab. Since I'm going to be overlapping these band styles, I don't need to see the grid or the major or minor ticks. The only thing about this band style that I want to display are the labels at the major and minor stations. I'll click OK, and OK. If I click Apply, we can see that change on screen. Notice there's a gap measurement here. This controls the distance between the bands. Currently, this is set to a half inch. If I was to set that to zero and click Apply, you can see how that puts the bands right next to each other. Both of these bands measure one inch tall. So if I'd like to overlap these, I could change the gap for the second band to negative one inch. I'll click Apply. Finally, we'll use these new labels to describe the edge of pavement profile elevations. I'll do that by selecting the second band. I'll slide down and we'll choose Profile 1. This represents the label on the left. We'll assign this to the proposed left edge of pavement profile. And then the label on the right will be used for the proposed right edge of pavement. When I'm all done, I'll click Apply and OK. And if I zoom in, we can see that I have a nice set of dynamic labels describing both the existing and proposed centerline elevations, as well as the proposed left and right edges of pavement. So the next time you're creating a profile view, ask yourself if it would be helpful to incorporate multiple design profiles. By simply adding more bands, you can label as many profiles as your design needs require. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.